Do you feel tired all the time? Or do you feel sore and achy and don't know why? Or maybe you've put on a few pounds or struggle to lose weight even if you're dieting. One really common but misunderstood cause is thyroid problems. Hi, I'm Dr. Dave Candy, owner of More for Life and author of Chronic Pain, You're Not Just Getting Older, You're Not Crazy, and It's Not All in Your Head. And I see lots of patients who have chronic fatigue, weight gain, and chronic pain, and their doctors can't explain why. Now, they may get a diagnosis of fibromyalgia, and let me reassure you that the pain and fatigue that you feel with fibromyalgia are absolutely real. But often, the label of fibromyalgia is just their doctor throwing up their hands and saying, I don't know what's wrong with you. You have fibromyalgia. Just deal with it. But oftentimes, patients with fibromyalgia do have some underlying medical cause that's responsible for their symptoms. Just it hasn't been discovered. And some of the really common causes are autoimmune disorders, thyroid disorders, or autoimmune thyroid disorders, such as Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So in this video, I'm going to explain normal and abnormal thyroid function, how to tell if your thyroid may be responsible for the symptoms you're having, and the next steps to take if you think that it is responsible. So first, let's discuss normal thyroid function. Your thyroid gland regulates your body's metabolism, and normally your thyroid has to maintain your thyroid hormones in a very narrow range. If you get too much, then it can cause problems. And also if you get too little, it can also cause problems. Now having too much thyroid hormone or hyperthyroidism kicks your metabolism up too high. On the opposite side, you have hypothyroidism. And that's the much more common problem and also the topic of this video. Symptoms of hypothyroidism can include fatigue, weight gain, muscle weakness, muscle aches, joint pain, it can also include dry skin, hair loss, feeling cold all the time, depression, or mood swings. Hypothyroidism can be caused by various factors, but one really common one is an autoimmune disorder called Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Other causes can include iodine deficiency, radiation therapy, or certain medications. Additionally, hypothyroidism is much more common in women due to hormonal changes around pregnancy and again around menopause. In fact, women are five to eight times more likely than men to develop hypothyroidism, although men can get it as well. Now, understanding how the thyroid works is crucial to getting a proper diagnosis and treatment, especially since normal thyroid tests don't always tell the entire picture. Your thyroid gland is controlled by a region in your brain called the hypothalamus, as well as your pituitary, your body's master gland. The hypothalamus releases thyrotropin releasing hormone, or TRH. That then acts on the pituitary to release thyrotropin, otherwise known as thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH for short. Thyroid stimulating hormone then stimulates the thyroid gland to release thyroid hormones either T3 or T4, corresponding to the number of iodine atoms in the molecule. Now, T3 is the active form of thyroid hormone, but your body produces much more T4 than T3, on the order of 100 times as much. But fortunately, your body can convert T4 into the active T3 form. Now, under normal conditions, your body converts T4 to T3. But under conditions of stress or illness, your body can conserve energy and chop off a different iodine molecule, creating something called reverse T3. And reverse T3 binds to the same receptor as T3, but it doesn't have an effect. So essentially, it blocks T3 from doing what it's supposed to do. Thyroid hormone affects almost all of your body systems, but especially your central nervous system, your cardiovascular system, your digestive system, and your musculoskeletal system. So it's no wonder that when your thyroid is off, it can cause a whole host of different problems. So let's move on to testing. The most common tests performed to monitor thyroid function are 
TSH or thyroid stimulating hormone and T4 levels. Now, if your TSH is high, but your T4 levels are normal, that's considered subclinical hypothyroidism. Your thyroid is able to produce enough T4 if your pituitary is producing an excessive amount of thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, if your TSH is high and your T4 is low, that's considered clinical hypothyroidism. And that means that your thyroid can't produce enough T4 even when your pituitary is overproducing TSH. And so that's when you really start to notice symptoms. But imagine this. Imagine you have symptoms of fatigue and weight gain and muscle aches, and you go to the doctor and you're sure you have a thyroid problem. And they run your thyroid panels and they come back normal. And your doctor tells you, your thyroid tests are normal, there's nothing wrong with your thyroid. But inside you know that something's wrong and that everything isn't normal. What do you do then? Well, that's why it's important to get a complete thyroid panel, including TSH, free T3, free T4, thyroglobulin antibody, thyroid peroxidase antibody, and a reverse T3. Now, free T3 and free T4 are the unbound forms of the hormone. Basically, it's what's actually available for your body to use as opposed to the bound forms. But remember, at the end of the day, it's really the free T3 that actually matters because that's the active form of the hormone. And if you're producing enough T4, but your body's not converting it into T3, then you're still going to have symptoms. Or if your body's converting T4 into reverse T3, you may still have symptoms. And so that's where a reverse T3 test can be helpful. Now, the absolute amount of reverse T3 isn't all that important, but when you compare the ratio of free T3 to reverse T3, that should be more than 10 or ideally more than 20, according to most functional medicine doctors. And the units on this are really important because if you just take the numbers straight off of your blood tests, in the United States, the normal numbers for free T3 are in picograms per milliliter, and the normal numbers for reverse T3 are nanograms per deciliter. And the ratio is picograms per deciliter of free T3 compared to nanograms per deciliter of reverse T3. So when you compare those in the correct units, the ratio should be 20. Now in absolute values, if you put them in the same unit, it's really more like two grams of free T3 per 100 grams of reverse T3, or a one to 50 ratio. So why they chose that convention doesn't really make sense to me, but that's how you test it. So that ratio of free T3 to reverse T3 tells if too much T4 is being converted into the inactive reverse T3 and blocking T3 from doing its job. Now, furthermore, it's a good idea to get thyroid antibodies tested particularly thyroglobulin antibody and thyroid peroxidase antibody. And those give you an indication if your body's producing antibodies that are trying to fight your own thyroid proteins. Again, these are an indication of autoimmune disorders such as Hashimoto's, Graves' disease, or they can even be present in the case of thyroid cancer. So talk to your doctor about getting a complete thyroid test including TSH, free T3, free T4, thyroglobulin antibody, thyroid peroxidase antibody, and reverse T3. Now, if your doctor won't order it for you, you can also order it online. And I'll put links in the description here where you can order it at yourlabwork.com. This isn't a sponsored video, but for full disclosure, these are affiliate links. I think their motto of be your own health detective is really applicable in this situation. When it comes to your health, you have to be your own advocate. And sometimes that means taking your health into your own hands, even if your doctor won't prescribe the test or your insurance won't pay for it. Now I will note if you do order through them, they partner with Quest Diagnostics for the actual lab draw. 
So make sure there is a Quest Diagnostics lab in your area if you do choose to order through them. Now, no matter where you get your testing done, what do you do when you get your results? Well, when you get your results back, you're going to have your test values and then a normal range or a reference range. I'll put some sample results up here as to normal reference ranges, but they can vary slightly from lab to lab. So make sure to compare your results with the normal range from the lab you use. It's also a good idea if you're getting repeated sequential testing to monitor treatment to use the same lab each time so you can compare apples to apples. Now, as far as the actual interpretation of what the test values mean, it is a good idea to do that under the guidance of a healthcare professional. But what do you do if you find that your results are abnormal and you do have an underactive thyroid? Well, the treatments can come in the form of both lifestyle changes along with medication. And the typical medical management is to give synthetic T4, levothyroxine or Synthroid. And those boost your T4 levels, which then is supposed to get converted into T3. But remember for some people that your body may not convert T4 into T3 effectively, and so you may still get symptoms even if you're taking a T4 or levothyroxine medication. So why not just take the active form of T3? Well, there is such a medication called triiodothionine, or Cytomel is the brand name of it, but you do have to be really careful if you're taking a T3 medication. Because with T4, since it doesn't all get converted, you can be off on the dosage a little bit and be okay. But with T3, it's really potent. And so small variances of taking too much can actually throw you into hyperthyroid. That may include symptoms like insomnia, excessive sweating, or heart palpitations. And in some cases, it can even increase your risk of heart attack or stroke. So you have to be really careful if you're going to take a medication that substitutes for T3. Now, another option is bioidentical thyroid hormone, and that's taken from animal thyroid. And it's usually a combination of T4 and T3 together. And furthermore, your body may recognize it more as normal hormone as compared to the synthetic version. But the point of this video is not to tell you what you should take or shouldn't take. It's just to inform you so that you can have that discussion with your doctor. And that's really something that you and your doctor need to decide what's best for your specific situation. Now, regardless of what you do as far as medications, proper lifestyle changes can either reduce or eliminate how much medication you need to take. So one really important component of that is proper diet. Getting enough lean proteins, fruits, and vegetables is really important. You also want to avoid highly processed foods because there are additives that may provoke your symptoms. And although you should eat lots of vegetables, you want to avoid excessive amounts of cruciferous vegetables, such as broccoli or cabbage, as high amounts of those can actually disrupt your thyroid function. Additionally, many people can be sensitive to gluten, dairy, or soy. So limiting or eliminating those from your diet for a short period of time may be a good experiment to see if you notice a decrease in your symptoms when you cut out or reduce those foods. It's also important to get a proper amount of exercise. Exercise will help stimulate your metabolism, help you sleep better at night, and help you control your body weight better. Since stress can affect the conversion of T4 to T3, you also want to practice good mindfulness activities such as doing yoga, meditation, or deep breathing. Those are all great ways to control your stress level and help you improve your conversion of T4 into the active form of T3. Additionally, if you are struggling with fatigue, making sure to get enough sleep and quality sleep is important. Practicing good sleep hygiene, like having regular bedtimes and wait times, getting pre-noon sunlight, doing some physical activity each day, keeping electronics and work out of the bedroom, and practicing a wind-down routine the last hour before you go to bed are all good tips that you can use to help you get to sleep better. Limiting caffeine and alcohol can also help you sleep better, and if you are going to use caffeine, 
try to cut it off by noon so that you can get to bed at night. And finally, make sure to stay hydrated. All of your body's chemical reactions happen in water, so make sure you're giving your body enough of it. So hopefully you found this video helpful to better understand your thyroid function and understand if your thyroid is contributing to your symptoms. Now, if you did find it helpful, hit the share button below this video. At More For Life, our goal is to help people stay active, mobile, and healthy without relying on pain medications, injections, or surgeries. And the more people that see our videos, the more people that we can help. And if you are in the St. Louis area and you need more help for chronic pain or fatigue that you can't figure out, just contact us at our office and we'd be happy to help. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.